On October the 6th, 2021 in Bahrain, Team WRT became FIA World Endurance Champions in the LMP2 category. It's the team's first world title since they took the crown in the FIA GT World Cup in Macau in 2016. This is the story of their unbelievable 2021 season. It's the beginning of March in the W Racing Team workshop in the Belgian town of Bordeaux. Gio is a little tense. This is the first time he's done a full livery on an Orica 07 prototype. The car's only just arrived in the workshop. The team's LMP2 programme has only just started. It's the end of winter. Everything and everybody is in place. Mechanics, engineers and drivers are getting a first taste of the car, their work environment and each other. This point is killing me, so... Yeah, let's, let's cut it here away. This yeah. year, the team can count on a star driver. There should be no real need to introduce Robert Kubica, but just like WRT, the Polish driver will be making his debut in Enduring's prototype racing this year, competing in the ELMS, the European Le Mans series. WRT is a, is a team which uh, I have been in touch uh, since, I think, two, three years. Uh, we met, uh, I think, in, with Vincent a couple of years ago in Spa. I have followed the team. Uh, you know, I have some friends racing in GT, always heard uh, good stories about uh, WRT, so uh, I have no doubt about uh, the, the way and the, the approach they have to the races. And for Robert, it's really important to meet his new team. In endurance races, you know, the, the team has to stay united. They, you know, the guys has to, they are going through difficult uh, challenges, you know, uh, working a lot of hours together. So it's a very important uh, uh, to have a good atmosphere, uh, this kind of feeling of being a family. So uh, I'm looking uh, forward to be a member of, uh, of a family, a new member of the WRT family, and hopefully uh, we will all enjoy. Just a couple of days later, the team has travelled to the Circuit de Catalunya named Barcelona for the rollout of the car. Robert puts all of his racing experience and analytic prowess at the service of the team. Okay, it is still one up, but uh, if you make an early mistake in lap one, you can afford it. He's the natural leader of the driver lineup, which is completed by Swiss driver Louis Delatraz and Chinese driver Ife Ye. At 20, Ife is the youngest of the three, but already has sports car racing experience. I've done the AJ Le Mans series to, to, to test this, this winter, which went really well, and I took the title on my uh, sports car debut, so yeah, I think I have done a good decision and teaming up with WRT, one of the oldest and best teams in the GT and endurance. Uh, they will be uh, beginners or let's say debutants in the LMP2 category, but we have got the right personnel, right engineers, right drivers to work uh, together to build a very strong team and uh, very looking forward to it. Of course, don't abuse the tires, but do not be half a second off the pace in average because I would like to see if we have an issue with those tires over long run. Son of former Formula One driver Jean Denis, Louis Delatraz has been Formula Renault champion, an F1 test driver for Haas, and competed at Le Mans in 2020 at the wheel of an LMP1 rebellion. La LMP1 et la MP2, il y a quand même une, une différence. Il y a beaucoup plus de puissance et d'aérodynamique, de, de downforce sur la LMP1. Donc euh, ça faut un peu se réhabituer. C'est un peu comme le step F1, euh, F2, euh, un peu moins exagéré, je dirais. Mais euh, pour moi, d'avoir appris en LMP1, je pense que c'est quand même un, un atout. WRT have decided to go big in 2021, and as well as competing in the ELMS, the squad has entered the FIA World Endurance Championship with the Le Mans 24 Hours as its Blue Riband event. At the wheel of the second car, two WRT stalwarts, Robin Freins and Ferdinand Habsburg. They'll be sharing with Charles Melesi, who will have to get to know his new team during the first few weeks of the season. I really managed to feel good with the team from the beginning. Then I think I'd like to ask maybe two or three advice about how they work, how they like the car, how they work in general, etc. Especially when we arrive on the courses. 
Mais non, vraiment, je suis bien senti à l'aise dès le début. After a successful 2020 campaign racing for WRT in DTM, Ferdinand Habsburg expects a lot from the new championship. What are the expectations? I don't really have any. I, I'm just glad that I'm racing, you know. If we continue working the way we did last year uh, and the way that the team performed last year, anything is possible. And uh, with Robin and Charles on my side, maybe we can win some races and uh, call ourselves world champions at the end. That's what we hope for. With the ever-enthusiastic Habsburg, discreet work of Melezi and the quiet strength of Freins, the lineup is one of the major assets of the number 31 car. After an intense season in Formula E, Robin has a realistic view on the possibilities for the team in the WEC. We have to be realistic. Uh, we go there to the first race in Spa, obviously to be competitive from the start. Well, Le Mans is the first time I go to Le Mans, I've never been there before. So, again, if we don't do any mistakes, if we keep out of trouble, we will be there at the end. C'est un programme qui s'est lancé euh, de manière assez, assez tard dans la saison dernière et au début de cette année. Donc le, le plus gros challenge a été de recevoir tout à temps, euh, aussi bien la voiture que les outils. Donc on n'a eu que très peu de temps pour préparer euh, tout ce qui est outillage spécifique, le travail, le travail et les méthodes. Donc le but c'est de s'assurer qu'on sait marcher avant de courir, euh, d'avoir toutes les bases saines afin d'arriver dans la meilleure position pour le début de la saison. At WRT, everyone is ambitious and the clearly defined goals are realistic. But there's a big unknown. The car entered in the WEC, the number 31, has an entry for the Mon 24 hours. But the second car, Kubica, Ye and Delatraz, has to wait for an invitation by the French organizers. That decision is made during the Barcelona test on March the 9th. I have a problem with boîte mail. Ah. Yes! Combien? 31-41. Just if anyone wants to know, we have two entries at Le Mans. So now everything is in place for the team to start a season that would turn out to be an historic. In what is a short time in motorsport terms, WRT have come a long way. In the beginning, Yvetz, a Belgian logistics entrepreneur, was the sponsor of driver Vincent Voss. They joined forces and have become one of the most successful teams in motorsport. WRT has won 49 titles in the last 12 years. And the Spa 24 hours, the Nürburgring 24 hours, the 10 hours of Suzuka, Bathurst 12 hours, and victories in every major GT championship. To sum up, WRT knows the path to success. In 2021, they take up a new challenge in sports car racing at the 24 hours of Le Mans. It's a return to Barcelona for the first event of the European Le Mans series, a four-hour endurance race. Just a month since the start of the LMP2 programme, everybody in the team has one simple question. Will we be good enough from the start against high-level and very experienced competition? Right from the start, the number 41 is among the front runners. In qualifying, Louis Delatraz sets the second best time just 0.183 of a second away from the pole sitter, Nick de Vries. During the race, the team fulfilled the hopes given by the early pace. It's a brand new era for the European Le Mans series. Season 2021 about to get underway now! Somewhat of an untidy start in the midfield there, but a great getaway for Roman Rusinov, who has scampered away from Louis Delatraz, who slots into second place. There's a United Order Sports car off, though I think that's the 22 machine. Right from the start, Louis is battling for the lead with the G-Drive car. In the LMP2 class, all of the cars are identical, so it's down to preparation, strategy, and of course the drivers to make the difference. The Swiss youngster gives the experienced Roman Rusinov a lesson in clean overtaking. 
Here he comes. Here he comes to the inside line, turn number one. Delatra is going for it. Roman Rizan off trying to move back again. He may lose second place here as well to Phil Hansen, who is all over the back of the Russian driver for G-Drive Racing. A round of applause down at Team WRT. They're brand new to the championship, and already they lead the opening round with Louis Delatraz. The rest of the race is a dream scenario for WRT. No mistakes, a faultless strategy, and efficient driver changes. Delatraz and Yeh hold on to the lead and hand over the car to Robert Kubica, who finishes the job. Team WRT, who turn up for their first race with so much success in the GT world, and Vincent Voss's team take victory at the first time of asking with Robert Kubica, with Yi Fei Ye, <laughs> And with their third driver, Louis Delatraz. Louis Delatraz. They both embrace down in the garage at WRT. You like my French? Oh, very good. Well done, well done. Bon, les gars. La première. Au final, ouais, c'est une grande fierté. Est, on, est, on est déjà là, on est déjà en train d'embêter le paddock. Euh, maintenant, il faut être conscient qu'on vient juste de, de taper dans la fourmilière et qu'on a réveillé tout le monde et que les prochaines courses vont être d'autant plus dures euh, à, aller, à aller gagner. The Barcelona ELMS win has given the team an enormous boost and put the pressure on the competition. At the beginning of May, most of them travelled to Spa for the first round of the World Endurance Championship. For Vincent Voss, this is his home race, literally. As he travels from his nearby house to the circuit, the team principal is well aware that this is a stressful but very exciting new project. I was much more stressed during the summer when you have to unite all these people, but once you have these people and you are convinced that they are the right people, I don't have any reason to stress it. It's the advantage to work with people with whom you really want to work. I bring a little bit of my experience, from a more general view. My job, my goal, is to find the right people. We're already a great team. Let's have a great team. But when I'm on a track, I'm not very happy. Because I'm not very happy. 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 L'envie que ça se passe bien, euh, que tout tourne comme on a prévu, et euh, ouais. Everything had started so well in Spain. The WEC has turned out to be a tougher challenge. In free practice, the 31 lacked pace. That's a genuine issue here at the Belgian track. In qualifying, WRT is two and a half seconds away from United Autosport on pole position. And during the pre-race briefing, the doubts creep in. If you look only at ourselves, the performance we had yesterday and the issue we had, we should have run short on our car. Why are we discussing then? It doesn't matter if you have five yeah. degrees more or five degrees less, if you buy the car, are you not gaining anything? There's something wrong with the engine. I think the only thing yeah. we can do now is to maximize everything, try to like for the driver change or exactly. in the race, not make any mistakes and try to be 100% maximizing everything. We have something good to do, so we all have to stay focused and uh, do everything to the limit. At one stage during the year, we will be in the, in the opposite situation, I'm sure. So. They don't have a choice. The drivers have to start with a car that's not at its healthiest it's probably going to be a difficult first WEC race. Robin Freins takes the start, and as usual, the quiet Dutchman does the job and gets to the front. 
climate change will surge to fairly long. Ferdinand takes over, but there's an issue. The LMP2 race car uses a semi-automatic gearbox, so the clutch is only used to pull away. This means Ferdy can defend his position on track. Better still, he's fighting for a podium spot. Jota now under pressure from WRT, and through immediately goes uh, goes Ferdy Habsburg, dives past Sean Galeel. Good shot, good shot, nice overtaking, seven laps to go, seven laps to go. There's drama when Charles Melesi tries to get underway as the clutch refuses to cooperate. Not much, not much. Really check when you can, be ready to free pump the clutch, free pump. Not much, not much. Free pump, free pump. Okay, he's reporting no clutch, he's reporting no clutch. Pump, pump, pump. Yeah, I'm pumping. It's really good in the vitesse of the vitesse. And it's due to what? Unfortunately, we had some uh, clutch uh, issues uh, already from the last pit stops. We tried to start the engine without, but uh, it's getting worse and worse, so we are trying to fix the issue. Uh, something in the gearbox went wrong, so, yeah. Unfortunately, we have to repair and try to go out and get experience on track. 45 minutes of repairs, but the car will get to the end of the race. Watch out for traffic. You have a clear track now. We have 65 minutes to go. Good job, boys. Good job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have uh, half a point if we finish the race. Nice to jump to all of you. The Spa experience has brought the team back down to earth. The level of competition in the World Championship is extremely high. To shine this year, the team will have to fight hard at every remaining race. While the Le Mans programme is new to the team, WRT is still racing in GT3 championships with Audi R8 LMS race cars. The GT3 squad is a separate entity in the workshop and both programmes are run in parallel. It's a successful start to the season for WRT. It's pairing of Belgian drivers Dries Van Tour and Charles Wertz win the opening round of the GT World Challenge in Manicor thanks to an incredible overtake by Charles Wertz. The tone is set. For the Circuit Paul Ricard 1000 km race, Wertz and Van Tour are joined by Kelvin van der Linde. They put together an impressive race. From 14th on the grid, they carve their way through the field and finish just five seconds behind the winner. Next, a perfect Italian weekend in Mazzano. Vantur and Wurz topped every timing sheet and won the two sprint races. The summer successes for the Belgian squad continue. The GT team win race after race with the Audi R8, while the ELMS boys and girls travel through Europe. For the second round on the Austrian Red Bull ring, Delatraz, Ye and Kubica make it two wins in a row. Everybody now wondering who could stop the newcomers in the championship. Team WRT is part of the multinational logistics and real estate Vates group. 
Right from the outset, the group has integrated the WRT motorsport activity, which is growing in importance with every passing year. La passion est, est importante dans tout ce qu'on fait. Et justement, euh, le, le sport automobile euh, fait partie de, de cette énergie dont, dont on a besoin pour développer les autres activités. Et c'est un peu cette, cette philosophie de, de, de travail qu'on essaye euh, d'apporter également euh, aux autres euh, divisions qui, à la base, sont moins des métiers de passion, mais qu'on essaie de faire avec la même passion, justement. There is no better location than Spa Francorchamps Circuit to organize a meeting of the board of directors and to combine business and pleasure. It's a great opportunity for CEO Pascal Wirtz to introduce the racing activities to the executives. For a few years now, the 24 hours have not been kind to WRT. This year they field four Audi R8 LMSs and they're under a little pressure. Comme l'année dernière, en fait, euh, deux officiels, donc la 37 et la 32, et deux WRT, donc la 30 et la 31. Bon, je pense qu'on a quand même euh, tout euh, dans les mains pour, euh, pour essayer d'aller chercher cette victoire. C'est évidemment impossible de faire une course de 24 heures sans faire d'erreur. Euh, le tout, c'est d'en de, faire le moins possible et qu'elles soient le, la, les moins grosses possibles. Et déjà, si on arrive à faire une course qui est propre, sans, sans erreur, Je pense qu'on a quand même des chances de, de, de finir au moins sur le podium, en tout cas. Unfortunately, the qualifying session plans are thwarted. It's a peculiarity of this race that in qualifying, each driver has 15 minutes to set the time, and the average of all times sets the starting grid. The strategists on the number 32 car at WRT took one risk too many. Dries Van Tour was sent out onto the track at the last moment to set his time to benefit from a clear track. That didn't count on an error by Japanese driver Tomita, ironically at the wheel of another WRT car, who crashed and caused the session to be ended early. Zero laps, fucking zero laps. So Dries Van Toa hasn't set a lap time. That means his car, the number 32, that he shares with Kelvin von der Linde and Charles Wirtz, will have to start from the back of the grid. It's the same story for the number 31 of Tamita, Bird and Eriksson. Faut respirer quoi On est pas en dernier, son centième. Tu peux gagner euh Non, gagner de fou. Merci, merci, merci. Obviously We've made life a bit more complicated for the drivers um, by going out a bit late, by being unlucky with two red flags in a short session, not getting a lap time in, so that puts us 55th on the grid. It's going to make their life more complicated, but it's not going to make it impossible to win the race. Um, I believe the pace is good. Three drivers are very equal in lap time. Um, if we do our job correctly as a team, by 12 hours race, we want to be the lead group again, and then everything is back to play for. Saturday morning, a crisis meeting for the Audi number 32 crew. Starting from the back of the grid, they have 54 cars in front of them. That requires a total change of strategy. I'm convinced we can get the result from this, but we have to be patient. If we want to force the issue to be up there after three or four hours, it's going to go wrong. If we go for it and we take our time, we will get that. We will get back where we belong. I don't know that we belong on P1, P2, P3, but we belong for sure much more in the front. And we will get there if we all stay smart, calm. Even when we do a mistake and we have a setback during the race, we still keep fighting, we don't give up. And step by step, we will go. We will go to the front. Let's go. The 24 hours of Spa is the biggest GT race in the world, with 58 cars on the starting grid, all GT3s with similar performance levels. Among these, a good 20 can legitimately aim for the overall victory. So this race, although 24 hours, is actually a set of sprints between pit stops. So the drivers are constantly flirting with the limits of the car and the track. Best WRT qualifier is the number 37, Müller, Lindt and Franz. The number 30 of youngsters Paul, Goethe and Colapinto starts from 30th position. There's tension in the WRT garages. With two cars starting from the back of the grid, 
there's a real risk of getting caught up in an incident in the first couple of laps. It is blast off at Spa. Downhill they go, and it's Raffaele Marcello who grabs the advantage. Mirko Bortolotti slots in second. It's Luca Stoltz who goes third. And then fourth, David Pittard in the BMW. Everybody so far. Very quickly, Nico Muller and Kelvin van der Linde start to move forward. Full potential, 10 seconds. 23 minutes into the race, and a big crash at Radion brings out the safety car. Kelvin von der Linde stops at the perfect time for fuel. The 32 car is up to 15th and back at the sharp end of the race. And then, as often at Spa, the rain comes. It's good news for WRT, for the R8 is extremely efficient on a very wet circuit. The pit stops for WR team are timed to perfection. All the cars are fitted with rain tyres, and Muller continues his recovery and finds himself fighting for the lead positions. WRT cars continue to improve. Even a huge scare for Nico Muller at Radion fails to dampen the spirits of the team. But at the end of the first stint, their smiles all around. It seemed like the rear aqua planed in the compression. There was a lot of water and I nearly lost it, but just, just about managed to keep it on, on the black stuff, which is important. No, so far the car is in great shape and we want to keep it that way. The number 37 now leads the 24 hours. Kelvin von der Linde hands over to Dries van Tour. He's brought the number 32 all the way back to eighth. Uh, we expect him to go in the front, but it went really quick. I think we made the right choice of strategy. And then the driving of Kelvin was really good. We, we take our time. Now it will go slower, but yeah, very happy with the first hours, yes. Yeah, that, that, to be honest, I didn't expect that, to be honest. We thought after like six hours we'd be in the top 20. And now we are there after two hours, so uh, I'm very proud of that, but still, it's a long race ahead. The other two cars have an uneventful Saturday afternoon. The number 30 of James Pull, Benjamin Goethe and Franco Colapinta has fallen back a little, but it has to be said the crew is very young, an average age of just 19. And Franco Colapinto is new to the team, the car and the GT3. He's come in at short notice as a substitute for Stuart Hall, who's been affected by COVID. After starting from the back of the grid, the number 31 of Tamita, Bird and Eriksson have started a solid comeback. After his crash during qualifying, Ruichiro Tomita has had a complete reset and now is performing very well in this important race. I don't for forget this one because then, uh, it is a mistake. I, I, uh, I think about, I have to remind her, but the uh, mindset as I completely forget about it and I feel like a new day and a new me. As the day ends and night begins, there's a certain rhythm setting in. The whole team continues without making any mistakes. Got him. Mega job, mega job. This year's restrictions meant the 24 hours was held in front of just a small crowd, although some lucky fans were able to attend, including some WRT guests who were comfortably seated at the Villa de la Source. Around one in the morning, Thanks to clever strategies, WRT are first and second. Dennis, yeah, confirm box, box, stay in the car. Remember, speed limit, call the line. It's 1.15 a.m. and a nervous moment in the WRT pit. Dennis Lind, in second place, has stopped at the pit lane entrance. Stop road. Copy. Just give it a minute to let the, any fuel settle down. Try pump. The fuel tank of a racing car is filled with foam to stop the fuel sloshing around in the corners. To get the last few drops out, you have to wait until the precious liquid is pumped out of the foam. 
So after a short wait... Tried to start it again, tried to start it again. Dennis restarts and returns to the pit. The leading battles are so close, that tiny split across the orange Audi crew five positions. They drop from second to seventh. It's been a perfect strategy for the number 32. The pit stops have been managed brilliantly by the engineers. And after eight hours of racing, Van Tour, Van der Linde and Wirtz are in a battle for second. With the Lamborghini of Bortolotti, Mapelli and Calderari, and the Ferrari of Ledegar, Nielsen and Pergidi. At each pit stop, the positions change. The gaps measured in mere seconds. I think we're not too bad, we're in a good position to attack the enemy. I think we're going to have a little bit of speed compared to Ferrari or McLaren. In the whole, I'm quite satisfied with my relay, but I think we're going to have to look at a little bit more performance than that. We'll see what Kelvin and Idris will do for the night, and then I'll take the relay. We'll have to wait a long time this night, so we'll see what we'll do. I'm going to be able to attack the enemy in the morning. Everything you do on right, nothing is right now. I'm shaking and I'm shaking. Everything to not say what I'll regret. I raise you up and you wipe me out. You battle your cage, you don't want to fight. I'm tripping your walls. Okay, mate, next car for position is Fred Mako. Okay, Robin, 3.3, yeah, confirm your whole thing again. Lamborghini running wide in front of you. Yeah, Opie okay. has already two track limits. The gap on Robin is 11 seconds still. As the new day dawns, there's a dark and threatening sky above the track. Faces up and down the pit lane are marked by long hours of intense fighting. It's been a long night for two of the drivers of the number 31 Audi, Tomita and Bird. Yeah, me and myself and Rio, we shared the night, which was pretty tough, to be honest. Uh, it's morning now, so we've come out the other side, and uh, yeah, I haven't had much sleep so far, so looking forward to getting to bed. Robin, so box, box, driver change, remember speed limit, and call the line. In the early hours of Sunday morning, the mechanics choose to make the mandatory technical pit stop. And as fuel reset, keep your foot off the brakes. At this stop, the cars go back into the garage to change the brake discs and pads. Although this operation only takes a few minutes, using it strategically means a lot of time can be gained. Hey guys, one minute. Thirty. Yeah, it was massively lucky actually because we, um, I think it was green for about eight or nine hours, so. We were fearing we'd have to do the technical stop on the green, which is always the loss of a lap and a half, which, which is massive. Puts you out of the lead lap, so you're pretty much done then for victory. And then the car went off and we had a yellow, we had a full course yellow, so we benefited from that. So everything went well, the boys did a great job to get it out in time. So um, yeah, a little bit of luck and a little bit of um, <laughs> hard teamwork. Good luck there but another setback for the number 32 crew in their fight for the win. Please, you hear me? Yeah. We have a small issue. You cannot run on the limiter. You have to stay below 50, and during the pit stop, we have to change the pit limiter. They are really looking crazy at us. In the Spa 24 hours, the pit lane speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour with a very small tolerance. Officials have noticed that the 32 is very tight to that limit. 
Race Direction have demanded that WRT rectify the pit speed limiter or face a penalty. This is a delicate operation and requires reprogramming of the electronic systems of the car. They lose 48 seconds. Following this confusing intervention imposed by race control, Kelvin, Charles and Dries lose precious time each trip down the pit lane. Now they'll have to take even more risks on the track to get the win, which seems really quite feasible now. In the battle for the overall victory, the number 32's only opponent is now the number 51 Ferrari. Well, you don't want to take too much risk, you know, because it's still four hours to go. Uh, you came from like 20 hours, so you don't want to lose it all, you know. But of course, you want to put them pressure and make sure that they make a mistake. And um, I think we are doing that at the moment. Uh, of course, with the track limit, it's not easy because as soon as you go over, you have... Uh, yeah, and if you have one drive through, it's basically done. The last three hours of racing are a classic battle between the Ferrari and the Audi. On the track, the German car edges closer second by second, but in the pits, the gap widens again, and then everything has to be fought for again. The hope now is that the Iron Lynx drivers can be pushed into making mistakes. That won't be easy. Ledegar, Nielsen and Per Gidi are very talented. The other possibility is to hope for fit to intervene and roll the dice. Just under an hour of racing left. One more stop for fuel. Alessandro Pergidi at the wheel of the Ferrari, Dries Vanto in the Audi. Both cars have to come into the pits. The sky is threatening, but the track is completely dry. On the spur of the moment, Vincent Voss, with the blessing of Chris Renke, the boss of Audi Sport, decides to ignore the advice of their strategists. Wet. 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 Vincent knows this region like the back of his hand. This is where he grew up and where he still lives. Dries, we're going to take a big risk. We go on wet tires. We go on wet tires. So you have to go really clean with the tire the first lap. There is big rain coming in the next six minutes. His gut feeling proved to be correct. <laughs> the number 32 has barely left the pit lane. Still with Vantour at the wheel. The floodgates open, the track changes to a river, and at WRT, there's cheers. Now, let's just hope for Fukushima until the flag. With the other cars, including the lead Ferrari, coming in for wet tyres, Dries Vantour leads, he's half a lap ahead. But there's another twist. The deluge has led to crashes. The race director calls for a safety car. The neutralization of the race closes the gap. And now the Ferrari is just behind the Audi. At WRT, they realize that the end of the race is going to be extremely close and it will be decided on track between Alessandro Perghidi and Dries Van Tour. The tension in the garage is unbearable. Whoa! As the safety car releases the pack, Dries, driving the race of his life, is only a few metres ahead of Alessandro Perghidi. The Italian wants victory at all costs and closes right up. This 24-hour race will be decided in the final few minutes. Everyone is holding their breath. OK, the Ferrari is now the car behind you. They are nose to tail, and right now, the Ferrari is all over the Audi like a fat pigeon on a chip. We've been racing since half past four yesterday. Nine and a half minutes to go, side by side. On the outside line is the Ferrari, and Pierre Guin is going to do it. Right round the outside, he's got the drive, he's got the momentum, and he's got the bravery. Alessandro Pierre Guin, he leads at Spa. Fantastic! There's move. nothing Dries can do. There's no blame attached to him. Don't give up. Everything can happen the last lap. We've seen last year. But bring it home and be fucking proud what you did.
WRT have always fought hard at Spa, but it's been a while since they got the result that their endeavour deserved. In 2021, that has changed. Tomita Bird and Eriksson finish in 24th. Paul Colapinto and Goethe, the number 30 car, finish 22nd and 5th in the Silver Cup. The number 37 of Muller, Freins and Lind missed the podium by fewer than 15 seconds. The car that started 55th on Saturday, the black and white R8, finishes in 2nd. Just four seconds from the top step of the podium. Dries for Vincent, you can be very, very proud of what you did. Great drive, great race. So maybe a few regrets for Charles Wirtz, Kelvin von der Linde and Dries van Toor. One hand on the trophy for sure, but 24 hours earlier, if you'd offered them second position, I think they would have taken that. Arguably one of the most perfect races in WRT history. With head held high and a lot of respect, Vonson goes to congratulate the winners. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, well deserved. Nice race. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye-bye. Congratulations. Barely 15 days have passed since Spa, and WRT has a new date with history at the Circuit de la Sart. Charles Lara, Ferdi arrive, and Robin arrive lundi. Hello. Comment ça va? Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. First name, Kubica. And then, Team WRT. Very big challenge, uh, great opportunity to race in uh, one of the biggest and historical uh, uh, motorsport events. For sure, uh, you know, I have been racing for many, many years, but uh, I, I never experienced a, such a, a complicated uh, weekend. There will be some surprises, but uh, hopefully they will, uh, they will not appear in, in crucial moments. The Le Mans 24 hours lasts not just for a day, but for a whole week. A week during which the whole region moves to the rhythm of the race. For most of the team, however, this is completely new. Only two of the WRT drivers have driven on the main circuit, Charles Melezi and Louis Delatraz. So during the track walk, they share their experience with the others. I have a theory, but tell me if I'm wrong. Because your left-hand side tyres will be warmer than your right-hand side tyres, is it good you've got more grip? Right? No, it's just more open. It's really more open. Vonson chips in too. He competed in the 24 hours five times as a driver, last time in 2005 at the wheel of a Ferrari 550. Finding some of those cars entered in the support race at Le Mans is a real pleasure that he's glad to share with his driver, Robin Freinge, 20 years his junior. This is the prototype I drove uh, in 2005 in the ELMS Championship. Vous savez si c'est, excusez-moi, vous savez le, le numéro de châssis Oui, c'est marqué. Ah, 25. C'était ma voiture en 2000 et 2001. This I did Le Mans also in 2005. With it. it was a nice. This was the best sound. When I was uh, small, long, long time ago, I was always driving with this car in the games. This was my favorite car. This I drove in Boy, I 2006. Drive. 24th of Spa 2006 and 2009. Okay, maybe we better go for your briefing. No, no, <laughs> this is much more fun. If we want to do a good result, we must try to make no mistakes. There are a lot of scenarios where we can make mistakes. I will just show you a few of them. Sunrise between 7.30 and 8.30 at the Dunlop Bridge. You know, it will because visibility can be terrible when you have the sun in you ice. That's only, if, of course, if you have a very, very clear day, very nice weather, but then you can have a very, very uncomfortable half an hour post sunset and sunrise. 
WRT have both of their Orica 07s on the entry list at the Le Mans 24 hours. The only time this season the team have fielded two prototypes. This requires solid logistics and some of the GT staff as reinforcements. In qualifying, the team is at the sharp end with the car of Delatraz, Ye and Kubica. This set the second fastest time in LMP2, while the number 31 of Freins, Habsburg and Melezi is a little further behind and qualified in 11th position. Moi j'ai passé pour 5 gars. secondes pour faire ça. Hein. On, on a vu que t'as été prendre un peu de gravier là. Ouais, pas qu'un peu. Bravo, bravo <rire> pour le petit. Hein. Ouais, il a bien bossé, bravo les mecs à tous. Là ça mérite qu'on ouvre une. une... Bravo Pas loin mais. L'année prochaine. Bon boulot. Ah c'est fantastique, je veux dire pour nous d'être en première ligne lors de nos premières 24 heures du Mans, c'est euh, super. Euh, sincèrement, toute l'équipe a fait un travail fantastique. Déjà hier en qualification, on fait troisième et aujourd'hui euh, deuxième. Donc je veux dire, pour une équipe qui a commencé un programme en février et qui arrive 24 heures du mois et qui se bat tout de suite contre les meilleurs, c'est bien. Et maintenant, il faut qu'on qu reste concentré pour la course, que c'est là le plus important. Sur un tour, on évite. Sur des longs runs, je pense aussi. Mais il va falloir faire une course parfaite pour, pour finir devant. Et c'est ça notre objectif, les, les gagner. You're playing it now, huh? Yeah, let's go, let's go with racing. <laughs> the only time he is not lazy is on Saturday morning. Should I open the door for you because you're a bit on an old man? Ah, finally you brought me with a nice car. Uh, hi, my name is Louis, I'm your chauffeur today. Do you want a water maybe? Yes, please. Okay, I don't have. Okay. At the end of the trip, if you could give me five stars, I would really appreciate it. On where? And tips. Advisor? Yes, and tips are not included. We are your spot supporters, uh, Robert. Yeah, it's cool. No, you have a big uh, banner in front of the box. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You saw? Yeah, always. But yesterday there was one with me. I see, always, because it's myself who I go in the video. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it. <laughs> of course, every time. As a real chauffeur, you should drop us in the closest entrance and then park, park your car. Wait, wait, oh. I, I open door for you. No courage, no, no, you don't need to. Don't be here. <laughs> Don't try to get people, you will not get people. <laughs> people. The starting grid at Le Mans is quite a ceremony, a unique moment in the season. It's the opportunity to meet important people like Jackie X, the original Mr. Le Mans, who is clearly delighted to find a Belgian team at the start. Il est bien mis sur la ligne, c'est un équipage chouette, c'est une équipe belge, je trouve ça formidable. Voilà, c'est la raison pour laquelle on est là à regarder la voiture, qui est une belle voiture. Vraiment, on fait équipe à part, chacun dans son coin et ouais. on ne se parle pas. Quoi. Ouais. Tiens, non, on va dresser, tout, on va dresser, comme ça tout le monde le sait. Comme ça tout le monde entend qu'on ne peut pas se blairer. <rire> These guys have, you know, WRT guys have come in and straight away been on the pace, the, executing races really well. They have a lot of experience in endurance with GT3, so definitely a team to watch. But the grid is also a tense moment, especially as the sky is getting really dark. There's only a couple of minutes before the 4 p.m. start. Ça va avoir une influence sur le départ, ça c'est sûr. Euh, on a un choix de pneus à faire en fonction de l'intensité de la pluie. Donc les météorologistes sont derrière nous pour nous conseiller sur la durée euh, prévisionnelle de la pluie et l'intensité. Euh, après, la course est longue. Euh, les pilotes savent que peu importe les, les circonstances de course, il faut rester concentré et ne pas faire d'erreur. Donc c'est notre objectif aussi. Et euh, même s'il pleut au début, voilà, on, euh, on a des pilotes d'expérience, donc euh, ça ne devrait pas poser de problème. Hey, how do you drive this car on the wet? Mate, we have uh, no, no, no. I never drove this car I, I drove in Monza and, uh, with the slicks. I did. I never drove in it. Fine. There's simply no choice. Robin Freins in the number 31 and Robert Kubica in the number 41 put on grooved wet weather tyres to start the 24 hours. Everything is in place. John Elkan, the chairman of the Stellantis Group, can get the 24 hours of Le Mans started. Pilot. 
démarrez vos moteurs. It will be a normal start. Normal start, please confirm. Yeah, compris. And we have the wrong tires on, really. It's gonna dry out quickly, Robin. It's gonna dry out quickly. The WRT garage holds its breath. Right from the start, Robert Kubica is into the fight for the lead in the LMP2 class. Uh, Ex-Formula 1 driver versus Formula 1 wannabe, Nick De Vries, very accomplished young gun, and he's about to make a move, is he? The Dutchman tries to get alongside the pole as they head down the Mulsanne straight, but Robert Kubica has got the line, but Nick De Vries keeps on coming around the outside line, and he's gonna do it, is he? Yes, fantastic! Takes that position, moves up to third position. Full push, full push, we'll have to box this lap, box this lap. Okay guys, get ready, it will be full fuel and tires slick. The track is drying very quickly, so after the first stint it will be back to slick tires. It's crucial not to miss the window, so at the first stop the team have to manage a double service. The WRT cars quickly settle down to a good race pace. They're following the plan to the letter, and the prototypes of the Belgian team are completing faultless stints, and so they've positioned themselves well, especially as their direct opponents are making mistakes. Oh, 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 the number 41 of Kupitzer, Ye and Delatraz takes the lead in LMP2. As long as we can sustain staying out on these tyres, we need to do that. If we need to change tyres, we need to do that as late as possible behind the safety car. The team have managed the full course yellows and safety car periods impeccably. And after seven hours of racing, the two WRT cars are in first and second position in LMP2. 41 leading from the 31 of Milesi, Habsburg and Robin Freund. Big cars like United, uh, G-Drive, which are always look very strong. They are, I wouldn't say they're out of contention, but they are a few laps down, so it will be difficult for them to come back. But the most important thing is that we come out of the night unscratched and hopefully we are in a similar position as now. To the outside world, it seems Kubica's leading car has great pace. But tiny issues are interfering. The windscreen is cracked and disturbs visibility a little. The rear was affected during the second stint. That's caused some vibrations on the rear axle. And there's a defective sensor, which is causing a very slight overconsumption of fuel. Small, seemingly inconsequential details, but they allow the second WRT car to pass for the lead shortly before halfway. Il y en a qui ont mis des pneus intermédiaires, nous on est resté en pneus slick. C'était difficile pour les pilotes pendant 3-4 tours, mais après ils ont vraiment fait un eu un avantage et c'est comme ça qu'on a pris les premières places LMP2. WRT's night is quiet and goes like a dream. The drivers put in great stints and the two Orica 07s are running wonderfully. Nothing to report from the hours of darkness. Uh, okay, well, we could. We are oublié. Ah, L'équipe a très bien géré la stratégie. Le moment où c'était très dur pour moi, c'était en slick uh, sous la pluie quand on est parti. C'est vraiment le pire pour un pilote. Partir de nuit, qui commence à pleuvoir et juste survivre. Mais, uh, mais voilà, c'est bien. On est là, on avance et, uh, et la vitesse est bonne. End of the morning, and the 31 and the 41 are still first and second with a relatively comfortable lead over the Jota of Blancfist, Van Dorn, and Galeil. The team, some are already thinking ahead to a perfect end to the race. Except this is Le Mans, and nothing works out as planned. Box this lap, box this lap, driver change to Robin, driver change to Robin. It's 12.50 a.m. 
Ferdinand Habsburg returns to the garage to hand over the car to Robin Freins. Don't blend in too early. Blend only in from the last two garages for your parking position. Check your belts for Robin. Normal pit stop position. Loud and clear, Robin. Pit stop completely fucked. The air jacks are broken. Uh, you are still on the rear tires with the old ones. You have new tires on the front, used one on the rear. The onboard hydraulic jacks of the car aren't working. To change tires, the car has to be lifted. You can't do it manually like on a Formula One or GT car. You'd risk damage to the front splitter or the rear diffuser. The solution is inflatable cushions that Jeffrey, the chief mechanic of the GT programme, called in to reinforce the Le Mans squad, put into the truck just before it left the workshop. Normally, these cushions are never any use. Here, they save the race. On a changé juste les roues avant, et puis on a fait un relais, et puis le relais d'après, on a soulevé les roues arrière, et on a changé les roues arrière. C'était un peu spectaculaire comment la manœuvre a été faite. Mais euh, voilà, on a pu changer les roues avant et les roues arrière. Mais évidemment, on a perdu beaucoup de temps avec la 31. Euh, donc le, le finish s'annonce assez serré. We have to survive. We have to survive. We are 30 seconds, 36 seconds in front of Louis. One minute 36 in front of Stoffel. Robin Freins on very worn tires relinquishes first position to Ifeye. But WRT are still heading for a 1-2 finish. Except that at Le Mans, it's never over till the checkered flag. Should be two laps to go. You fait gap behind 36. No throttle. Switch. Master switch. Restart. Do a full restart of the car, please. Oh, oh no! Oh, it's a number of It's a 41 31. car. It's 31. It's a 41. It is the 41. It's the leader. It can't be. It's the leader. It oh, can't be. Man. He's turning it off and on again. Oh, boy. I cannot start. I cannot start. It can't be fuel. Last lap. It can't be fuel. It's the, it's the leading car on the final lap of the race in LMP2. Well, and they're going to lose. Freins is through. If Freins is through to take it, Tom Blomquist 2.8 seconds behind oh on the very last lap. Robin Freins is back in the lead, but he's under threat from Tom Blomquist in the Jota, which has a fresh set of tyres. Robins are well worn, and the Dutchman can't defend. The spectre of the closing stages of the Spa 24 hours has come back to haunt everyone. The tension in the WRT garages is just unbearable. Push for your life, push for your life now. The sister car has issues, mate. We can still win this. This is the final lap. This is the final lap. Get behind you, three seconds, three seconds. Get behind 1.8 seconds, 1.8 seconds. Full push, full push. Robin, few corners to go, few corners to go. Come on, come on. Still 1.7 seconds, only a tenth game by Tom Blomqvist. The last lap of the 89th Le Mans. Huge drama in LMP2 for sixth overall and victory. WRT 41 car stopping at the beginning of the final lap. There is our GT Pro winner. Fries has got traffic. Fries has got traffic, I think. Not too much, hopefully. It'll be the Inception Racing Porsche. We will see the Toyotas win, and we will then go back to look for our LMP2 battle. There's Fries! Take the checker, take the checker, take the checker, take the checker, take the... Yeah! Oh. Into traffic and takes it by two car lengths. Seven tenths of a second. Seven oh, tenths of a second. That was oh, border of wow. us. That was Joy breathtaking and stuff. heartbreak in WRT. Well, what the fuck happened? We won the 24 hours, my friend.
It's, it, for me, the shittest thing is when you're on the podium and you don't get to bring all your teammates, uh, you guys, on because uh, we get to jump around and I do my best at doing it. It would be so much nicer knowing that everybody who actually played a part is on there receiving the trophy. So when I take the trophy, I'm thinking about you guys and I, I mean it a lot because uh, without it, uh, without the freaking pump up pillow that you guys somehow magically yeah. appeared. I we saw, I no saw a true under the car. Yeah, 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 here we go. <laughs> so uh, kudos to you guys for being just geniuses, keeping motivated. In this race, we haven't done like any mistakes except the, the, the air jack, but I mean, that's not really our fault. But yeah, I mean, like everybody was amazing. Yeah, you guys made it work with especially the 31 car. Unfortunately, 41 didn't make it. But yeah, quick reactions in the pit stop actually made where we are now. So all I can say is thank you to you all. It's been a long week, but I think we uh, yeah deserve to be standing here. Thank you guys. We have that mixture of joys and that mixture of sadness. And that's life. We have to cope with that. We have to cope with the emotion. We have to put it behind us when it's sad. When it's a victory, we have to forget that we have been the best because what counts is the next day. The target set for Le Mans has been achieved, but the season isn't over yet. Now there are titles to go for and the drivers of the ELMS Championship meet at Francochamps. The ELMS Four Hours of Spa is another success for Kubica Yeh and Delatraz a third victory and the European Championship title secured around before the end of the season. WRT's campaign in the European Le Mans series is a resounding success. Six races, three wins, two podiums, total domination. The end of the summer is the hunting season for titles and championships. And it's been a successful year to say the least. At Brands Hatch, Dries Van Tour and Charles Vertz became Sprint Cup champions in GT3. WRT took the team's championship. Wow. Nürburgring is sweet revenge for the finish of the Spa 24. Dries Van Tour overtakes Alessandro Perghidi on the outside of a dry track. And GT World Challenge Europe Championship is the reward. In Barcelona, WRT sealed the SRO GT Endurance Cup. So the only title not won by WRT was the Endurance Drivers Crown. But don't worry, nobody's perfect. 2021 is already the most successful season in WRT history. And Yves and Vincent Voss will go for the Holy Grail in Bahrain in the final two races of the World Endurance Championship. It's the first weekend of November. A few days earlier, the number 31 car won the Bahrain six-hour race and took the lead in the WEC Championship for LMP2. Early season outsiders, French, Milesi and Habsburg have now assumed the role of favourites against teams like United and Jota. I know a lot of people within the team and I know how professional they are, so, um, you know, it's no surprise to see them uh, competing at a, at a very, very high level towards the middle and, and end of season. And uh, yeah, they've already uh, created a big name for themselves. The objective is atteint for the first year. The series on the gâteau is to be able to win and win the title. But I think that, honestly, the pressure for the moment is more on the shoulders of our competitors, that is the team United with the 22, the team Jota with the 28 and the 38, because they really have to be in front of us, win, nous pourrait potentiellement se permettre de jouer placé avec tous les risques que ça comporte aussi quand on veut trop calculer. Just eight hours of racing remains in the 2021 season. Eight hours to clinch a first World Endurance Championship title for WRT. The stakes are high, but this doesn't disturb Robin French on the starting grid. You got a third stack of penalty. Ah, oh, fuck you. Yeah. No, really. Why? In first pit stop. Why? Something with the tires, I don't know. Fuck off. Man. No, really? Nah. No, yeah, I'm not joking. No. Yeah. Why? Tires? Yeah, something with the tires. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. First stop, we need to wait 30 yeah, seconds. 30 seconds. Ooh, he's all mic'd up. Look, what are you mic'd up for? Ah, uh, you're <laughs> fucking silly, bro. You're mic'd up for. He's trying to smoke these things. Come on. Yeah, he's trying to pull at the cost. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. That was already exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll always be there to look out for you. Yeah. Leave him alone. Yeah. Leave him alone. He, he saw it. He was like, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck. <laughs> As seems to have been the case throughout the whole season, the number 31 wasn't the best performer in practice and qualified only seventh in class for the final race of the year. Ferdinand Habsburg, who takes the start, knows he will have a lot to do in the early hours of the race. The tall Austrian gets the job done at the wheel of a perfectly set up car. And toward the end of his first stint, Ferdy puts in a superb pass on the United car to take second. As Ferdinand hands the car over to Charles Milesi, the car is in a perfect position. All that's left to do is manage the remainder of the race and not make any mistakes. Now I think uh, we, we need to make sure we, we make no more mistakes and, and just have a clean race. And I think it's, I felt very nice in the car. One of the great strengths of the team this season has been the quality, consistency and speed of its three drivers. Ferdinand, Charles and Robin have not made mistakes and each of their races have been solid, incisive and well paced with a great result at the end. At the chequered flag of the eight hours of Bahrain, WRT wins its third consecutive race in the World Championship which seals the driver's and team's title. Total success. Robin, I'm so happy, man. Robin, what an achievement, what an achievement. Thank you guys for this achievement. You can be proud of all you did this year. What an incredible job, guys. Thank you, thank you, all of you, thank you. Merci, les gars! Bravo! The joy overflows and gives way to emotion when Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich, the iconic former boss of Audi Sport, falls into the arms of Vincent Voss, with whom he has won so many GT races. Wow. <laughs> A racing team never rests on its laurels. December the 9th, Valencia, Spain. And for a whole day, Valentino Rossi tested the Audi R8 LMS. Is this the start of a future collaboration between the nine times MotoGP champion and Team WRT? I did uh, a good lap. I mean, uh, I drive quite well and I don't make uh, mistakes. Yeah, Push for your life, push for your life now. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Yeah! Well, what the fuck happened? We won, we won the 24 hours, my friend. My friend.